forgetting who we are. Okay. Not forgetting where we are, God. I thank you for not forgetting us, God. You said, <laughs> you know, all of all the grains of sand on the on the on the, on the earth, God. You still remember us, God. Lord, I just uh, thank you again, Lord, for your Son Jesus Christ, God, the sacrifice that He made, God, that you made, Lord. I thank you for his, his willingness, God, to follow your will, God. I pray that we would follow that example. And God, I just pray that you bless this time. I pray that, that this time would be yours, God, that we would forget about ourselves, God, that we would concentrate on you, concentrate on worship this morning, God, and we'll concentrate on, <coughs> concentrate, God, on the, on the sacrifice that you made. We'd be able to worship God freely, without any inhibition, God, without any, without any obstacles or anything weighing us down, God. We stay at home, God. You know, Hebrews 12, God, let's lay aside every sin, God, that hinders us, God, and just run the race before us, God. God, I thank you for our, just the ability to sing, God, the ability to stand, the ability to worship, God. I pray, God, that you continue, Lord, to, to minister to us through this time, God, and I pray that in this time of fellowship, God, that no one goes uh, untouched, God, Lord, I pray that we would uh, extend uh, extend our hand, God, a loving hand, God, and a loving hug, God, to everyone in, in this building, God. Again, Lord, I just pray that you continue to, to anoint this time as yours, God. In Christ, I pray. Amen. Y'all turn and greet those around you.
Sometimes those old hymns just touch, touch a place down deep.
thank you for the blood that can wash us despite our mistakes, despite all the crazy stuff that happens. God, you have the ability because you paid it all. God, we thank you for that. We celebrate that. We celebrate that. We have our victory and our, and our healing and our deliverance happens because of the blood. God, I thank you that you paid it all. I thank you that you rescued me out of life of drugs and alcohol and all kinds of stuff. You came down to the gutter and you picked me up and got me out. Clean me up. God, I'm so thankful. I'm, I'm literally eternally grateful because of what you did for me in my life. I know for a fact, looking back, that it was you because I tried to do it on my own. I tried to let the world fix me, uh, counseling and NA and AA and all these other acronyms. And God, when I called on you, you're the one that picked me up and set me free. So there's no doubt in my mind that is nothing but the blood. No other fight I know. There's nothing else that can produce life. God, part of the reason you allow suffering on this planet is to contrast your ability to bring life, to bring healing, to bring deliverance, to bring redemption. To take an old broke down heroin at it. And have him give glory to God now. That's what you can do. That's what faith can do. That's what faith can do. All the religion aside, all that stuff, it doesn't get you anywhere. Nothing but the blood. God, forgive us for the other fonts that we draw upon. It's nothing but the blood. I thank you for that. In Jesus, you can be seen.
I know many of you here uh, know what that's like, or, or to be a parent, and, and it's just a wonderful responsibility to be able to to raise your children, and it's not an easy thing to do. I remember when uh, Abby was about four years old one day, she asked me, Daddy, who made God? Wow, simple little question, huh? Uh, who made God? You probably know the answer, so if you would just write it out for me, give it to me at the end of the service, I'll, I'll pass it on to you. You know, who made God? And really, the Bible tells us we don't really know. And he was there in the beginning. There's no beginning, no end to God. So, you know, those questions are really, well, when your children ask you certain things, it makes you think, wow, I, I really don't have all the answers. You know, there, there, there was a little boy one time asking his dad, he said, Dad, what's the difference between a pack of wolves and a pack of crackers? And that just blew his dad's mind. You know, his boy was always asking this kind of question. What's the difference between a pack of wolves and a pack of crackers, son? He said, I don't know. He just, I mean, it, just, it just blew his mind. And his son would ask such a crazy question. And then his son said, well, Dad, if you don't know the difference between a pack of wolves and a pack of crackers, I sure am glad Mom does the grocery shop. <laughs> so, you know, but as a, as a father, we do have a lot of questions that we, we can't answer as a parent. You know, things that we don't know, but and we could never fulfill that responsibility to be a godly parent without knowing the heavenly father. We must know the heavenly father. You know, God at the beginning of time, he created a perfect world. And he had no problem with the world he created. He loved it. He pronounced it good. And then he created the first man and woman in his image, the Bible says. And he had no problem with them. He loved them. It, it, it was good. But then they decided, like I do at times, that they knew more than God. And they sinned. They disobeyed God. And then that perfect relationship was broken. Sin broke that perfect relationship. Now they had a problem. But the Heavenly Father, God, had a plan. And from the very beginning of the scriptures, we can see in Genesis chapter 3, we can see His plan. That a, a, woman would now, a woman would give birth to a son, and through that blood bloodline, this, 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 this perfect bloodline, we just think about the blood, that a uh, Messiah would come. We know that Messiah was Jesus Christ. And, and in book after book of the Old Testament, we read about this Messiah. And, and then we, we read the, what he, his purpose was. He was to be the suffering servant. servant. And we just think about the blood. The Bible says without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sin. There's no forgiveness of sin. There must, there must be a sacrifice. There had to be a sacrifice. We read that in book after book of the Old Testament. And then we read in the New Testament the good news. That the Messiah came. And his name is Jesus. He walked among us and showed us exactly what the Heavenly Father was like. Show us exactly how much he, he loved us because Jesus loved everyone. It didn't matter the age, the, what was in their, in their wallet. It didn't matter uh, what their position was. He loved them all, took time with everyone. And he stayed laser focused on that purpose. Laser focused on going to the cross and dying for the sins of the world. Jesus said, no one takes my life from me. I willingly lay it to so he laid his life down. I love for you, for me. He shed his blood for us. Then he was placed in the tomb. Satan thought he won a victory, but he had not. And on that third day, he rose again. And he is alive today, still transforming lives. What a beautiful testimony Jim shared in his prayer. And you have a beautiful testimony too. If you know Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, he has transformed your life and he is still transforming Lives, and it's because of his relationship to the Father. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Only Jesus can forgive sins. He lived the perfect life, and he, and he, only has, and he defeated death. Only he can forgive sins. So we must know the Father. And we can only know the Father through Jesus. Now this morning, I want us to look at a very forgiving story. A story that tells us about the Father. The Heavenly Father. We'll be in Luke chapter 15. Luke chapter 15. I'll start reading with verse 25. This is in a chapter that tells some stories. Jesus told simple stories. You know, I love that about Jesus. Uh, he, he wants us 
to know him. He doesn't play hard to get. When I was in school a few times, and I had some girls I was kind of sweet on, and I was too scared to talk to them, so I had to send them a note. I said, do you like me? Just check yes, no, or maybe, right? One day I actually got a baby. Wow, wow. But you know, if you ask Jesus that, do you love me? He's not going to say maybe. He's going to say yes. And he wants to have a relationship with us. And in the Bible, we have some very simple stories that share some very deep truths that can change our lives. They can change our lives. And Jesus does not play hard to get. God does not play hard to get. Other religions will basically say that you have to really work, work really hard to, to, to understand God or even become like God. But no, we don't have to work hard. We just have to accept what Jesus has done, his work on the cross through the blood. We just accept that. So, so he, sh he shared a lot of simple stories, Jesus did, when he was here. And in this chapter, he, he shared uh, some stories about uh, how Jesus is, is so caring and, and how God loves people and searches for people and wants to have a relationship with them. Uh, see, the, the religious, religious people of the day, they hated Jesus because he hung out with people that didn't have it all together. He hung out with people that they considered unclean. And, and, and they said something about it. And they would, he would ridicule and, and, and they didn't like the fact that Jesus loved everyone. They felt like they deserved to be, uh, have a special place. But you understand that God so loved the entire world, everyone. Not just a few people, not just a religious crowd. He loved everyone. And Jesus told one story there about, you know, a uh, shepherd had, had uh, 99 sheep, but he was missing one. So he, he goes out to find that sheep. And when he finds that sheep, there's a, a great celebration because that one that was lost was found. And Jesus said, in heaven, that's what it's like. There's a great party in heaven when someone accepts, his, accepts Jesus. And then he told the story about the lady that lost a very valuable coin. And she swept in her house very carefully and looked and looked and looked until she finally found that coin. And then she called everyone in and they had a great celebration. And that's what, what happens in heaven, Jesus said. When one person is found, the heaven celebrates. Everyone is important in the kingdom of God. Everyone. You're important. Everyone is important. And then he told the story that we know as the parable of the prodigal son. But the, the truth is, it's the story of a father who had two sons. And so I want us to, to look at the story. I want to start a little bit. I want to start reading in the story, verse 25. But you remember the story. There was a, a father who had two sons. And one of the sons wanted his inheritance. He took all his money from his father. His father gave it to him. And then he went and spent it all. And I'll go over the story some more a little later. But he spent all that money. He wasted it all. And then he realized he could go home. So he, he came home. And his father welcomed him. And he had a celebration. A great celebration. Celebrating the fact that his son that was lost was found. His son that was dead was now alive. And so he was celebrating that. And, but there was another son there. And that's what I want to start reading about here. In verse 25 of Luke chapter 15. It says that now his older son was in the field. And as he came and drew near to the house, he heard music and dancing. So he called one of the servants and asked what these things meant. And he said to him, your brother has come because he has received him safe and sound. Your father has killed the fatted calf. But he was angry and would not go in. Therefore, his father came out and, and pleaded with him. So he answered and said to his father, lo, these many years I have been serving you. I have never transgressed your commandment at any time, and yet you never gave me a young goat that I might make merry with my friends. But as soon as the son of yours came, who has devoured your livelihood with harlots, you killed the bad cat for him. And he said to him, the father said to him, Son, you are always with me, and all that I have is yours. It was right that we should make merry and be glad, for your brother was dead and is alive again and was lost and is found. I want us to think about this godly father. A godly father. What are the characteristics of a heavenly father? We see that in the story. And the story is this. There was a father who had two sons. 
And the younger son came to him and said, Dad, I want you to give me my inheritance. And so the father gave it to him. So he left and went off to a foreign country. And he wasted it all in prodigal living or, or wild living. He went wild, so to speak. Some translations say he acted like an idiot. You don't have to raise your hand, but anybody been there? I have to raise my hand. He acted like an idiot. He, he wasted all that money. And then a famine came on the land. There was nothing to eat. So he was hungry, and, 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 and he was so hungry that he hired himself out to a citizen of the country to, to feed pigs. And he was so hungry that he wished he could eat what he was feeding the pigs. And then he came to his senses and he said, In my father's house, he has many servants, and they have plenty to eat. So I will go back to my father and I'll say, Father, I've sinned against heaven. I've sinned before you. And I'm not worthy to be called your son. Please hire me as your servant. So he got up and he went home. He was still a long distance away. And his father saw him. His father ran to him and, and hugged him and kissed him. And, and, and then the son said, Father, I've sinned against heaven. I've sinned in your sight. I'm not worthy to be called your son. Before he could say, please make me a servant. The father said, hurry. Bring a robe for my son. Put a ring on his finger. Finger, sandals on his feet. Kill the fatted calf. Let's have a party for my son who was dead is now alive. He was lost. He's now found. And they began to celebrate. Wow. What a celebration it was. But then that son, we just read about the older son, he went out in the field and he came close to the house and he heard the music and the dancing. So he asked one of the servants, what's going on here? He said, well, your brother has come home, and since he's safe and sound, your father has ordered that we kill the fatted calf, and we're having a celebration. And the brother, the older brother, would not go in. So the father went out to him. Now, you see there's a trend here, isn't there? He ran to the younger son. He goes out to the older son. And he pleaded with him to come in, but he would not. He would not. And he said to his father, he said, I've never disobeyed one of your commandments. I've always done what you've asked me to do. And you've never even given me a young goat, a little goat, to have a party with my friends. But as soon as this son of yours, you get that, don't you? This son of yours, and my, my son gets a little trouble sometimes at home and I come home from work and my wife will say, you're not going to play with this son of yours, did <laughs> Your son. But see, this brother, he wasn't excited about his, his younger brother coming home. He was just worried about how it all impacted him. And so he said, as soon as he, this son of yours comes home, who wasted all your money on harlots, on prostitutes, and he did not know that. He didn't know that. That's what he says. He says, he wasted all on prostitutes. You killed the fatted calf. And then the father says, but son, all that I have is yours. All that I have is yours. And, 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 and you're always with me. It's only right that I would celebrate my son, who was dead and now alive, who's lost his family. It's only right that I would celebrate. Now, what I want to do very quickly here is look at the Father's heart. Because the Father is incredible here in the story. And that's what our Heavenly Father is like. It's a simple story that really can help us get it, understand how much He cares about us. So the first thing you'll see is that the Heavenly Father is approachable. Now, this son went to him and, and said, that, Dad, I, I want my inheritance. He was younger. The older son uh, would usually get two-thirds of the inheritance. I mean, the older son would get two-thirds, the younger son would get about a third, since there were two sons here. And so 
this, this fellow was ready, the young, young boy was ready to get out on his own. And so he goes to his dad and says, Dad, I want my inheritance. Now, that would really be hurtful if you were a father, especially in this day. Because what is the son basically saying? He's saying, Dad, you're worth more to me dead than you are alive. I really don't want to wait around for you to die. I really want my inheritance now so I can enjoy life now. I don't want to sit around here in the house and make any memories or anything. I don't want to have any more holidays with you. I, I, I just really wish you were dead so I could get my money and I could do things on my own. The way I want to do how hurtful that would be. But the father granted his request. He didn't have to, but he did. He gave him that inheritance. And his son packed it up and left. But when the son was away and acted like an idiot, wasted all the money, was in trouble, he knew he could go home. He knew his father was approaching. No matter how far he was away, he still knew that his dad loved him. I, I'm sure before he left home, his father had spent a lot of time with him and had cared for him and 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 uh, I'm sure this father just all been, didn't all of a sudden become a nice guy uh, when he was coming home. He'd always been a loving father to him. And he knew that he was approaching. And so he went home. Our heavenly father, God, is approaching. You can be a million miles away, but he's still there, ready for you to come he wants to have a relationship with you. He is not hiding from you. He will punish sin. He has to do that because he is a just God. But his first inclination is to love you and forgive you and hug you and welcome you back home. Our Heavenly Father is approaching. The Bible tells us very clearly in Romans that nothing can separate us from the love of God. Nothing can separate us. Oh, he's an approachable God. And then we see here that he is a merciful God. See, this, this, heaven, this father in the story, it seems every morning was looking out there. Because it says when the son was a far distance away, the heavenly father, I mean the father of the story, saw him and ran to him. And the picture is that, that almost every morning, I'm sure the father would awake and look and long to see his son coming home. He longed for his son to come home. He wanted him to come home. He did never rid off, he had never written off the son. It's easy for us to do sometimes, isn't it? To just write people off. So if you're going to act that way, okay, good riddance. I don't have to deal with you anymore. But that's not what our Heavenly Father does. And that's not what the Father's story did. He was longing for his son to come home. And as soon as he saw him a long distance away, he ran to him. He didn't wait for him to crawl up to him. I'm sure he was stinky. I'm sure he was hungry. I'm sure he was a mess. He didn't wait for him to, to crawl and, and beg and, and grovel there. No. He ran to him. And then he gave him the best that he had. The robe, the fine robe, the ring. That ring was a sign that he was a, a member of the family again. Saddles on his feet. And then the fatted calf, that was a big deal. They didn't have the big uh, uh, barbecues like we do all the time. The steak supper was a big deal back then. And so it was a big celebration because the father is merciful. Mercy. He doesn't give us what we deserve. He doesn't. He gives us more. Here, here this son was going to say, just, just make me a hired servant and, and just, just, I'll do anything you tell me to do. I'll, I'll work long hours. I'll work 16. I'll work double shifts every day the rest of my life. Just give me a little something to eat. Just take a little bit of care of me. Just have a, a little bit of mercy upon me. But no. Our Heavenly Father gives us grace upon grace. Amen. Mercy upon mercy. More than we deserve. 
He said, Jesus said, I've come that you might have life, that you might have it to the full. That means it's overflowing what he gives us. Our God is approachable, and he is merciful. What a heavenly Father. He cares for the lost. He cares for those who are dead and their sin. There's a last thing here we see about our heavenly Father. Yes, he's approachable, he's merciful. But we also see that our Heavenly Father is impartial. He's impartial. <coughs> now, this is a, what the big brother had a problem with. The father had not been like the son, but it's pretty obvious to me the older brother had ripped him off. He was glad that he was gone. Because now he had his two-thirds of the inheritance and he was the big man on campus, so to speak. He was the one in charge and, and he had been home and, 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 and he uh, felt like he deserved respect and he deserved everything that he had received. And then that scoundrel comes home. His brother shows up and he's not excited about that. So in this story, you can see Jesus that told the story, the, the younger son represented the sinners that Jesus was hanging out with. The people that had problems that weren't perfect, that didn't have it all together. And that's the people that Jesus was hanging out with. This older brother was representing the religious crowd, right? right. Representing those that felt like they, they had it all together. They deserved uh, honor. And they deserved God's really be impressed with them and the way that they dressed and the way that they walked around and things that they did. You see, this older brother, that's the attitude that he had. He deserved respect and for, for what had happened and what he had there. But no, the father loves the older brother, but he loves the younger brother too. See, our Heavenly Father's impartial. He's not looking at your bank account to determine where or not he's going to love you. He's not looking at the good deeds that you've done to decide where or not he loves you. You can't earn his salvation. The Bible says that by grace we are saved, not of works. You can't earn the death of Jesus Christ. Do you think you're that good? That you deserve Jesus, the perfect, uh, the perfect sacrifice, the fellow that lived the perfect life, the God man? You, you deserve him to die for you? No, you didn't deserve that. That's grace. That's mercy that he showed us. And so, so we didn't deserve that, but, but he gives it to us freely. It's by grace we are saved. Not of ourselves, lest we should boast. See, the religious crowd, they were boasting about their goodness. None of us can boast. For all have sinned to fall short of the glory of God. So, God is impartial. He wants to save everyone. Everyone. And, and we see that from the story. But we have to be careful that we don't become like the older brother. You know, when I was uh, a student minister at one time in a church, uh, the Lord blessed us to have some relationships with some, some teenagers that were really having some tough times. They had you know, difficult, challenging home lives, and, and uh, I, you know, I tried to love them and care for them, and we were getting a lot of them to come, but, you know, they weren't the best behaved all the time. I know all your, your teenagers here are just perfect, I know that, you know, uh, and so you never had any problems with that here, but, but when these teenagers would come to church sometimes, they would leave candy wrappers around, or they would talk during the church, or they would do some things that they shouldn't do, and, and, and I had a, a fellow come to me, a, a leader of the church came and says, Brother Bill, we've got to do something. They're leaving candy wrappers back there. They're, 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 they're stirring service a little bit. We've got to do something. I said, well, I'll do what I can. I'll talk to them. I'm trying to guide them and, and try to move to the Lord. I said, but, but isn't it just great that they're here? And he didn't say anything. And I said, I just want you to tell you, I'm trying to get the, the worst kids in this neighborhood here to church. He looked at me and he said, well, you've done it. And he turned and walked out. It's okay to raise the teenagers that are top of their class. It's okay to raise them that got a lot of money and 
and are, are, are perfect. It's okay to reach them. No, that's not God's idea. He's impartial. He wants to reach everyone. And let's be honest, none of us have it together. It doesn't matter if you wear a $100 shirt or a $2 t-shirt. Your heart's the same inside. Without Jesus, it's dark. And you're separated from, from God forever. He can burn an Isaiah t-shirt as fast as he can burn anything else, right? Because God is impartial. So what a heavenly father. And again, as members of the church, sometimes we see people come in and they be a little different from us. We, we got to be very, very careful that we don't have this attitude of the older brother. That, well, we'll just wait and see if this sticks. Oh, well, I don't think uh, he, he, he's been a scoundrel his life. He's coming up here now, church. Oh, I, this is what you see if this sticks. No. <laughs> That's not that you. What's happening in heaven? They're having a knockdown party. Celebrating that someone has come home. And that's what we need to have. That's what I love about your church. I find your church to be very welcoming, very, very much like that. That you love everyone. You have a wonderful fellowship here. And that's the way it should be. Because our God is approachable. He's merciful. And He's impartial. He loves us. And we need to be like the Father in the sense that His focus is on seeking and saving the lost. That needs to be our focus. Oh, what a beautiful sign I saw that snatch others from the fire and save them from June 23. That is what the church should be about. Seeking and saving the lost. That's what we're about. Not our comfort. We, we, we understand that we, without Jesus, we're all headed for Him. I heard someone say this. I believe it's, it's so true that, that, that the problem with some Christians is that they have forgotten what it's like to be lost. I remember when I was really convicted of my sin. I was very, very young, but I remember being convicted of the sin in my life and understanding that it needed to be forgiven and understanding I was lost and I did not even know what that really meant. I knew I was searching for something. I heard about Jesus and I heard the stories and and I remember going to Jesus and crying out to Jesus to save me as a little child can. And he did. And I haven't gotten over it. And I don't want to ever forget that feeling of the conviction of the sin in my life. And let's not do that. Because that's our purpose to seek and save the lost. My dad uh, has been a pastor uh, for 54 years, I believe. He's uh, 74 years old. He graduated from Pascagoula High School in 1958. He had surrendered to preach at First Baptist Pascagoula down there. And uh, so my dad, that's all he's ever wanted to do. He's had a calling upon his life. He's wanted to preach, and, and he's done. He's been faithful. He's still doing it. He preached at the Simpson County Baptist Association meeting a couple of weeks ago. I went to hear him preach. Wow, I'm proud of my father. And, 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 and he still has a lot of energy, and he just loves to share the gospel. But he's going through some health problems. He's having a, a blood condition that he's going through chemotherapy for, and, and he's responding well to it. Uh, and, but he has to go to treatments uh, five times a, a week, uh, once a month is what he's doing. Uh, and so uh, sometimes he gets real tired, but, but he's, he's still going strong, still doing well. My mother's dealing with dementia. She's in, in Alzheimer's and and she's really having some problems, and it's getting harder and harder for her. And my dad is just doing an incredible job caring for her. Boy, I'm proud of him. He's just really doing a lot. But they decided back at the end of the, the spring that they were going to try to sell their house. So they could move to an independent living facility in Hattiesburg. That's where he's getting his, uh, his chemotherapy treatments. And it would just be a lot easier to be somewhere where one could help some with cooking. And, and so they're, they're wanting to sell their house and then move down there. It's been a long process. It's hard to do. They live in the Mississippi and trying to sell the house. And, and, um, but we had a yard sale. My, my, my dad was wanting us to have a yard sale to get rid of some of the things to get prepared to move. And so on the day that we had the yard sale, I'm not very happy because this is tough for me. You, know, I, you don't want to see your parents hurt. You know, it's, 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 it's sad to see my mother's condition and, and she can't cook anymore. She used to be the best cook in the world. And, she can't cook anymore, she can't drive, and, and 
it's just it's, it's just sad to see that. So I'm not too happy about it. We have this yard sale, and, and they're selling some of the, the stuff that I have great memories attached to, setting a table here, you know, for $25. I think it should be worth at least $10,000. I used to crawl under that table, right? I mean, I, I, I slobbered on that table once. You know, it should be worth a lot. It should be in a museum somewhere, right? And so, but it bothers me, you know? I'm just not very happy about this. Here's something that has so many priceless memories attached to it, all these things, and somebody comes in and gives you a dollar for it. I'm not very happy. But my dad's out in the shed the day of the yard sale, and he's talking to a lady out there, and she's asking about some things out there, and she asked him about his lawnmower. And he says, well, I tell you, I can't sell it right now. Uh, when, when I sell the house, uh, I can get rid of it. If you'll give me your phone number and your name, uh, when I sell the house, I'll give you a call if you have first choice. Like she said, okay. So she, she gave his phone number. And again, I stand there. I'm not really happy. And then my dad took her by the hand and said, Ma'am, do you know the Lord? Do you know the Lord? And she did. She lit up her face up. She said, oh, yes, I do. She, she gave a little testimony there. And they, they were having a celebration there. And it's just like God just slapped me upside the head. You know? What's our purpose in life? To seek and save the lost. Here I am worried about all this stuff. Worried about the future. And what is my dad thinking? My dad's thinking, man, this is great. I got 100 strangers walking over to my property that, that I've never met. Most of them probably don't know the Lord. Wow, what an opportunity to share Jesus with them. Wow, what an earthly father I have because I have an incredible heavenly father who loves everyone. And that's my purpose. To seek and save the lost, the snatch of them. And what a blessing it is to have an earthly father. But he can only be that way because he knows the heavenly father through Jesus Christ. What Jesus Christ has done. So I just want to ask you first, do you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Get that soon. We've all acted like an idiot and fought against God. And that's exactly what that is. That's idiotic to fight against God. You're not knowing him. You're not knowing him. He cares about you so much. Uh, and, and, and he can work through the terrible circumstances of your life to, to make something beautiful. So, so come to Jesus. Oh, come to Jesus. If you don't know him this morning, you simply repent of your sins. You say, say forgive me of my sins. I, I'll make you the Lord of my life. And, and, and save me, Jesus. So have you done that? Come to Jesus. But also I want to talk to those of you that have been saved. Some of you have been saved for a long time. Are you seeking to save the lost? What is important in your life? Or are you using these resources that God has blessed you with to give someone a chance, an opportunity to know Jesus Christ and have eternal life because that's what it's all about. That's what the Heavenly Father cares about. There's more rejoicing in heaven over one person that repents than 99 come together at church and just talk about the good of it. He is about seeking and saving the lost. So let's, let's never be like the older brother. We might need to, some of us may need to repent of that this morning, that we've been like that. We've sat back and kind of ridiculed or, or not reached out. The Bible tells us that the older are supposed to train the younger. To not do that is a sin. To not try to reach out to people and help them find the way. So I just praise the Lord that we have a Heavenly Father that's approachable, this merciful and worship. Let's pray and we're going to have our, our time of commitment. We invite you to come and pray at the altar or if you want to talk to me or Brother Robert will be here and talk to us and we can share with you how to be saved. If you want to talk about something else, if you want to come and pray for someone.
down here at the altar. But you just do what God is leading you to do. So, so would you go ahead and stand? I'm going to say a prayer. And then we'll have a song. And we're not going to be with me. And you just come to Jesus. You do what you need to do right now. You can pray with you there in the queue. But you want to come and let us help you and talk to you. So let us pray now. As the musicians come. Father, oh, what a heavenly Father you are. What a great Father you are. You proved it to us over and over and over again. And Father, I pray that this morning, if someone doesn't know you, that this morning they will come to you through Jesus Christ. They will trust in what Jesus Christ did on the cross and his resurrection to defeat sin. And they will repent of their sin. They will trust in the blood. Oh, the precious blood of Jesus. And this morning I just pray that, that you would help us as Christians to recommit our lives to, 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 to seek and save the lost. Father, I thank you for this wonderful church. What a wonderful group here this morning. Uh, worshiping and singing. And, and all of us need you and have, have you. And, and it, just, just, it just touches my heart to see what you're doing at Temple Baptist Church. Just continue to work and help us as, as all the, the Baptist churches and all the Christian churches to work together to see and sing. Thank you so much for Jesus. And thank you for this time that we have. Speak to us. May we do what you ask us to do. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.